Do you want to make tiny planets like this? Or like this? Or how about like that? Hey guys, so today I'm gonna show you how I do my tiny planets. Um, I feel like every time I post a tiny planet, I always have a couple people asking me how I did it. Um, a lot of people wanna know how you can post them to Facebook because a lot of people can make them using the DJI app, but then when they go to post it to Facebook, it doesn't look like a tiny planet. It comes out like a panoramic photo. So I'm gonna walk you through the process today, uh, show you what program I use, how to use it. All right, stay tuned. Ladies and gentlemen. How I usually do tiny planets is I'll uh, put my take pictures in DNG mode, and then I'll take those pictures, throw it into Lightroom, uh, dolly it up, add some um, add some auto tuning, um, add some vibrancy, and then I usually export it as a JPEG from Lightroom. I usually then I take these photos, put it in Huggin, which is a program that we'll be using to to stitch together our panoramic pictures into a tiny planet and then I export the tiny planet out of Huggin. So that's my typical process, and if you're looking to do a high resolution, um, really beautiful tiny planet, the best way to do it is using DNG files. Now you can also use just the JPEG files that come out of the Mavic Pro, no problem. However, uh, you're not gonna get as much detail, it's not gonna, the color range won't be as good, because with DNG files you do get far more uh, dynamic color range uh, you also get more information in uh, shadows and lighting so when you can use a DNG uh, dolly it up then convert it into a JPEG then make your tiny planet uh, but for the sake of time uh, and and I'm not quite sure how many people have Lightroom so that's why I'm just gonna go jump right in with the JPEGs that came out of the Mavic Pro into uh, Huggin the panoramic stitching software the Huggin software is easy enough to find. Just type in Huggin Panorama into Google. You should find a link. Click on that link. It'll take you to SourceForge. And then just download the program from here. I'll include the link in the description. After it finishes downloading, go ahead and install the program on your computer. And we'll pick it up after you're done with your installation. Now that you have Huggin installed on your computer, go ahead and open it. Select Load Images and find your panoramic folder. Select all of your pictures within the folder by holding shift and selecting the first and the last. Now that we have all of our images loaded into Huggin, we can begin the alignment process. Go ahead and hit align. And what this will do is look for overlay in all of your panoramic photos and try to find control points where it can stitch together one panoramic picture. This process can take a while depending on the size of your JPEGs. JPEGs that come immediately out of the Mavic Pro tend to take longer than JPEGs created from a program such as Lightroom or Photoshop. After the alignment process is completed, we pretty much have a panoramic picture here. All we'd have to do at this point to make a panoramic is select the move drag tab and then work out our alignment and then export. But because we're making a tiny planet, we want to go ahead and modify our settings here in projection. To make this a tiny planet, change it from equirectangular to stereographic. You will now have this weird image that looks almost not recognizable. So to modify this, hit the move drag tab. On this little orb shape pictogram, we're going to go ahead and grab from the bottom and drag up. Now we have this tiny little photo and if we zoom in on it, we can see what appears to be a tiny planet. Now to optimize this, go ahead and make this as perfect of a circle as you possibly can using the guides as reference. Uh, I think that looks pretty good, so I'm going to keep it there. Maybe touch it up a tad bit. Okay. Now at this point, we have our tiny planet, and it's just a matter of cropping it. 
And if you want to modify the roll, if you want to flip it upside down, you can make it flip 180 degrees, such as so. Um, I'm kind of happy with how it looked before, so I'm going to go ahead and hit apply again so it gives me a full 360 rotation and returns me back to my original location. Now to change this crop line right here, we're going to go up to the top and hit crop. And I want to hit HDR auto crop, which gives me more or less exactly what I was looking for in terms of crop. Now to export, click on the Assistant tab. Click on Create Panorama. By default, the size is set to something ridiculously large, like 30,000 pixels. We're going to go ahead and drop it down to 1,000 pixels. We're going to change it to JPEG, and we're going to bump up that quality to 100, and keep it on that setting. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to Tiny Planet Watape and hit save. In the background, it is working on creating our tiny planet and what it's doing is actually creating temporary files that it will use to stitch together the tiny planet and in a couple minutes we should have a fully created tiny planet. So that's what these TIFF files are down here, these temporary files that will go away after the tiny planet has been generated. And here we are, our completed tiny planet. Now this image was captured in log, meaning that the colors are very flat. So after this quick inspection, just to make sure everything blended correctly, I'll go ahead and throw in a Lightroom to really bring out the colors. So I'm going to grab this file drag and drop it into Lightroom. I'm going to hit develop, scroll down to the settings, hit auto tone, add some contrast, and throw some punch on there. All right, it's looking pretty good. Now we just have to crop it. That looks pretty good right there. I'll tweak it a little bit. And pretty much what I'm looking for is that the margin above my subject and the top of the frame is the same as the bottom of my tiny planet in the bottom of the frame. All right, I'm happy with this, so I'm gonna go ahead and export. I'm going to go ahead and throw this in a folder called Edit in an LR Tiny Planet. And if I go over to my desktop, I should find that folder. Pat yourself on the back. You now have a completely shareable tiny planet. Hey guys, so uh, I put in a lot of work to make sure that this video was as helpful as possible, but I know that I didn't do a perfect job. So if I lost you anywhere at any point in time in this video, please let me know in the comments below and I'll try to address any issues that you guys have. Um, if you found this video helpful, please make sure to like and subscribe. It lets me know that you guys are listening and that you guys find my content helpful, which really encourages me to create more content. Anyway, that's it for now. Enjoy making your tiny planets and let me know what you guys make by hashtagging Trek with Tech in Instagram. Hashtag Trek with Tech. I want to see your tiny planets. I want you to let me know that I helped you make, make a tiny planet because it makes me sleep better at night. And it's, you got to go out there, get that drone up in the air, start flying, make tiny planets. The world needs you.